the Fantasy Six Pack Hour with your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, uh, you're awful. And AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, the bearded one, AJ Applegarth. What's up, man? Letting it grow out a little bit again, huh? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I'm lazy. Bit. I hate shaving. Yeah, so, me too. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> all good, man. All good. All right, all right. What do we got tonight? Um, third base preview is tonight. Is it just one, one, uh, one position? usually a busy one so we keep this one by itself um news and notes though man let's see here what do we got so i don't know what's bigger i will start with uh luis severino we mentioned him last week um he was being you know shut down for a couple weeks or whatever and and uh with loose bodies in his elbow or whatever whatever you know and you know it was the same injury he was dealing with at the end of last season. So that was pretty worrisome. And um, yeah, we were totally right to be worried about it because <clears throat> he's now having Tommy John and he's officially done for the year. So uh, anybody who drafted Severino early, sorry, it sucks. I've uh, been there. I've had that happen to me before. He drafted guys early and then they get injured. It blows. So um, yeah, I mean the, the Yankees are going to have a tough time filling the rotation at this point. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, you're you're looking at guys like uh, Luis Sessa and then Jordan Montgomery coming in to Montgomery's okay. anchor your your staff. I mean, there's nothing exciting about Paxton, Severino, all. and Domingo Juan all out for the foreseeable yeah. future. Uh, another pitcher, same division, Chris Sale. Um, no injury, but he's going to start the year on the 15-day IL. Uh, because he had pneumonia not too long ago, and he's still recovering from it. So who knows how long he's actually going to be out, but I think I think you're going to see his ADP fall a couple of rounds, and I'm perfectly okay snatching him up and just holding on to him for a couple of weeks because, I mean, I don't know about you. You know, he's a guy that I probably would have talked about in the starting pitching, you know, in the pitching preview, but... He's one of those guys that, yeah, everybody got scared to death. His ERA ballooned last year to over four, almost four and a half. But like, if you look at all the underlying numbers with him, strikeout rate, walk rate, um, you know, swinging strike rate, it was incredible. I mean, they were top notch. They were top five in every category. It was the home runs. He got obliterated. <laughs> like, I don't see that happening again. It's just like, he's too good. To get to have a four and a half ERA, in my opinion. So I think Chris Sale is going to come back and be, you know, just top notch again. And if people are going to already discount him and then discount him even more because he's going to start the year on the IR, I'll have him in every league, I feel like. So, um, and I already took him in TGFBI, uh, granted, before the pneumonia thing was announced. So, but I'm happy to just hold him for a couple weeks earlier in the year and, you know, reap the benefits for the last. What five and a half months? I'm good with it. Yeah, I, I mean, definitely uh, a downer for sale. And, and last year was just such a mess for him. So, not surprised at all to uh, to have already seen him be discounted just coming off of that year as it was. Um, and then you know, this just adding to it. So, yeah, if if he falls a little bit in any of my leagues, I don't have a problem just going after him and sitting on him. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, well, you know, usually we do beer of the week first, but our guest actually wants to uh, partake in the in the fun. So let's bring on our guest, uh, Jacob Dunn. Uh, you there, man? How's it going, guys? It's uh, it's good to be with you guys. Yeah, man. Absolutely. So uh, Jacob started writing for us earlier this year. Jumped right into some baseball action. Uh, glad to have him on board. He did the first base preview. Unfortunately, wasn't able to make that show, so we brought him on for the third base one. Uh, he's also done the the speed targets and the super sleepers article, and uh, I think he's got a few more lined up here. So uh, looking forward to seeing those. 
Um, all right, Jacob, before we run into this uh, third base preview, let's do our beer of the week. Mm, beer. Uh, we will let you go first. Do the honors. All right. All right, guys. My beer of the week comes from uh, a local brewery here in Colorado named Avery Brewing Company. Uh, it's one of my favorites here. It's called Maharaja, which uh, is an imperial uh, imperial IPA. Uh, nice. It is, uh, it's super dank. It's malty. It's fruity, yet it's so smooth. Uh, you know, it'll definitely grow some hair on your chest for <laughs> sure. But it is, it is so tasty. Good stuff, man. Nice. Good stuff. All right, I've Adrian, had a couple Avery beers back in the day, uh, visiting the lovely state of Colorado. Yes. Always, very good. always good. So I'll nice. have to, I'll have to see if we can find that one around here. Absolutely. All right. What you yeah, got, you Joe? Got. Oh, all right. I'll go then. Uh, Southern Tier Brewing Lake Shore Fog Hazy and Juice Hazy and Juicy IPA. Um, you know, Southern Tier makes some good stuff. I love their double IPA. Um, this one's on the lighter end for sure, but it's it's still tasty. It's you know it's definitely a really good mix of the hazy and the juicy, which you know are, are two of my favorite styles of IPAs. So. Uh, this one I think got a four on untapped for me, so it's definitely a, a fave of mine. Nice, yeah, I think that's the same one I had not too long back. It was maybe very good, very good. So the one I just cracked here is the Dogfish Head uh, American Beauty Hazy Ripple IPA. Nice. Um, I've had their just American Beauty Pale Ale, um, and it's based, you know, it's like a, a Grateful Dead. Yep. You know, homage, uh, and I've just really been listening to a bunch of dead on Sirius this past week. I don't just seems like every time I put it on, it's it's like a solid set of six or seven really good tunes. So I just letting the letting the feeling flow here with this one. So try it out and see what it see what it's got. All right, good stuff. Mm, that is that is good. It's, uh, <laughs> it's it's got it's got some nice uh, like juicy flavor to it so it's an unfiltered ipa dogfish chat is one of my favorite breweries they have one of my favorite beers uh i don't know if you've had the 120 minute oh my god that thing is like yeah i think it's like drinking syrup (laughs) (laughs) in a good way or not uh dude well maybe it was because i had a few ipas before it and i didn't know what it was when somebody gave it to me they were like here try this and i was like what is this it didn't have a label on it his brother works for dogfish so he's like here my brother gave this to me i drank it not gonna lie i woke up the next morning with like one of the biggest hangovers ever because i realized if you combined (laughs) the ipas that i drank before i drank like three um loose cannons which are like eight and a halfs and then i drank that which is like a 20 (laughs) percent beer right I was like, right, what, I just yeah. drank like 10 beers last night. <laughs> I was like, oh, crazy crap. Is, yeah, yeah. Like you don't know if you're getting 15% or 20%. Oh, like they have no time. idea what kind of percentage is on that beer. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I haven't tried it since. I want to just normally just be like, hey, okay, yeah. I'm going to have the 120. Just This is going to be my starter beer. Let's see what happens. Right. right, uh, right. I have it's not a done that yet. Oh, yeah, dude. It was. It took me a while to drink. I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh, man, this is this is heavy. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, so, I, I actually saw some 120s sitting right next to to this one, and I was too, like, uh, like, "I can't do it." I was like, over? "Yeah, <laughs> it's like nah, maybe not tonight." But I, I saw this one. I was like, "I'm trying to remember if it was the same one I had, but it, it's clearly different." So it's oh. definitely solid, though. I like it. Right on. All right, so I might be slightly distracted. I'm, I'm trying to make my pick in the TGFBI league, uh, run by Justin Mason. Uh, thanks for the yes. invite, Jacob. You're in this league too, a different division, uh, but right. uh, I'm also trying to like figure out my pick. So I might pause every now and then and be like, hmm, "Oh wait, wait, that's right, we're doing a podcast." Um, <laughs> but <laughs> let's jump into this, uh, though, man. Joe, yeah. Joe, <laughs> Bueller, come on, damn Bueller. it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So third base. Um, so we we start out with a little draft strategy. I'll give mine. It, it's basically like. Th- this position is right up there as far as depth for infield with shortstops. It, it, you know, this yes. used to be the deep position, right, for years, right? Um, now shortstop has caught up and perhaps 
depending on who you talk to, it's close at past it. But either way, it's still a super deep position. The guys at the top are unbelievably good. Um, they can do everything, right? Um, you know, a lot of these guys can run, hit, steal. So you're you're getting the best of everything here. Um, past that, you, you know, you're gonna get a lot of power. You're gonna get good average until you drop probably to like the 15th, 16th third baseman. And even then you're going to find some guys with good average down there. Um, it It's really just super deep. I mean, I, I, you know, this is another one of those. I'm probably trying to find, you know, one of the top, at least top eight third baseman and then fill my corner infielder with one of the next eight, you know, and you're going to get really good production all around. I mean, I'm looking at guys, you know, down, I don't even know what number this is, uh, in, on the draft chart inside my NFBC league draft, but you know, you're looking at guys like Mustakas and Sano and Escobar all hitting 30 home runs plus last year. And they're buried down the list. So you can get guys super late. And they're going to get 30 home runs out of them. And they're not going to really kill you anywhere else except for speed. You, that's the one thing you don't get a lot in this position. Even though I, I did say that up top, I guess I'm wrong at that. I was thinking there was somebody else that had eligibility and they don't. I guess I was just thinking about Ramirez. That's the one thing I guess you don't get is a lot of speed. So you just don't, if, besides Ramirez, you just don't get speed in this in this one. But you're going to get elite production up top with runs and RBI and home runs. So, um I don't know. Jacob, you got any anything else different there to add to that? You know, I was going to uh I was going to I was going to piggyback off of you and say that there were a total of 16 third base eligible players who hit 30 plus home runs in 2019. Yeah. So that's like you said there's incredible depth. Uh so so like I don't know about you but I'm kind of taking my sweet time getting uh, getting a third baseman in the uh, TGFBI because of that because 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 Careful. of the <laughs> incredible death. I will warn you about that. I made that mistake uh, last year. Um, uh, I waited because I was like, oh, there's so many, and then like that third run on third baseman went, and I went, oh crap, and uh, I drafted so start the run. and I drafted Sano, and of course you remember he started the year injured. I was like, all right, I'll hold on to it for a month, and he was out for like what two months last year instead. Uh, so that didn't help me, and I was I had total garbage at third base for like half the year. Um, so careful with that. Sometimes okay. <laughs> waiting on the position that has a lot of depth hurts you because everybody knows everybody targets those positions for their corner infielder, their bench, because they're so productive. Sure. Um, you know, especially in these industry leagues, right? You don't. It's not like your home leagues where people are going out and filling their starting lineup first. <laughs> they don't care. They want production wherever they can get it. Um, so I I hear you, and I did it last year. <laughs> I did not do it this year. <laughs> um, I have I'll grabbed, tread lightly. I have grabbed Castellanos. Or, no, he's not third base anymore. Just kidding. Nope. I have grabbed Manny already, and I guess I've got corner infield with Muncie if I need to, but right now I've got him at second base. So... I'm likely to grab one of these next third baseman who's left when there's not a ton left that, you know, I'm telling you, I'm in round 10 and I'm looking at the only guy that hit 30 home runs last year still available is Yuli Gurriel. Oh, it's, well, it's hit gone. 30 this year. Everybody's gone. No, definitely not. So uh, yeah, he went on like a tear ugh. for like two months last year. It was just like, Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, it's, oh. it's, it can get, it can drop off. Not that you know. Not that the guys behind them. You know, Turner not horrible. J D Davis is you know up and coming. Sure. Uh, you know, Hunter Dozier was good last year. You know, these guys like there's productive players later. But if you're looking, yeah, you know, I don't know who's left in your league. But if you're looking to grab one of those guys who's kind of locked in and you can feel comfortable with him every week. You might just want to go for it. <laughs> so gonna, a few people that. who's available in my league still, and we're in the ninth round, almost to the 10th, uh, Guriel, but 
I don't trust them like you guys are saying. Um, Eduardo Escobar uh, is actually still available. Yeah, he and, went in my league already. Yeah, uh, and Tommy Edmond, who... Yep, he just went. He got picked two picks before. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know if he will last to me because I'm not up for another 15 picks. So yep. I think I will have to spend... Uh, you're, spend. You're, you're in that range where you need to go get a guy right. now. Um, yeah, you yeah. May, you may get stuck with Gurriel, who I don't hate, but... Eh. You know, again, you know, you could also take a chance on like Scott Kingery, right? Who's who hopefully will Scott get Kingery, way more yeah. playing time uh, this year and, and be Ryan McMahon, maybe legit. And, you know, he's got a little speed on him, too. So that's not mm-hmm. total bad. In fact, he might be a guy at target because I have no speed. Um, sure. I'm right. Gonna hit 500 yeah, home runs this homer, year. But, or, uh, sorry, stolen bases huh? and double digit homers last year, too. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I've got. I've got 500 home runs locked up, but uh, I, don't, I don't have any speed unless Bellinger actually steals 15 bases again, which nah, I doubt it for some reason. So he could, anyway, maybe. maybe. Yeah. yeah, it's <laughs> doubtful. But anyway, uh, draft strategy. AJ, you got anything else to add or we kind of sum nah, it up there? I guess there? pretty much covered everything there. So, I mean, definitely it's a deep position. And uh, you know, for me, I, I want to get one of the one of the higher guys and then – just kind of not have to worry about it. Yeah. All right. Off to the questions. So we've got Manny Machado, uh, you know, 2018 w- was pretty ridiculous for him. Uh, if, if not his best statistical season, really, really up there. Um, I want to say, uh, a couple of years ago when he was with the Orioles and kind of in the MVP hunt for a little while might have been slightly better um, when he stole, you know, when he hit 35 and, and stole 20 bases at the same time. <clears throat> but you know, 2018 was still really rock solid, got traded to the Padres um, midway through the year. Dodgers. Dodgers is right. And then signed right, with the Padres right. last year. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> Last year was a, a bit underwhelming, although he did hit 30 home runs again. You know, only 80s for the runs and RBIs. Um, you know, the average was right, way down. Strikeout rate went up. Um, you know, his, his weighted runs uh, plus went went up. You know, or went down quite a bit. You know, he was he was pretty mediocre at home, which really hurt him. Lefty righty splits was pretty bad against him too. I mean, what? We just feeling like it was that, you know, he signed that mega contract and, and that kind of was hanging over his head. You know, he had a couple really monster months, but other than that, it wasn't pretty. You know, what, what are you thinking here, Jacob, for Manny this year? Yeah, I mean, like you said, he had – he he still hit for power, but his batting average, like, sunk down to, like, the 250s last year, mm-hmm. which was – which was a huge regression, but I, but I do think that some of it does does play a part that he was in, you know, he was uh, in a new stadium, fresh off of a three hundred million dollar contract, you know, like you know, like you said, it's possible that he just let everything get to his head and he just tried too hard, uh, too hard too quickly. But he, but he was able to salvage it at the end by hitting for power with a few stolen bases. So I do think that he gets more comfortable, uh, you know, having spent a full off season in San Diego, getting used to to everything over there. I don't know if you guys remember, but San Diego used to just be a pitcher's park. And recently they tried to make it a hitter's park, but I'm not seeing much of that evidence personally. I don't know what you guys think about that. Uh, I'm not looking at the ballpark factors right now, but I, I want to say you're kind of right on there. I mean, it's just, it's not a, it's not a big hitters park, but it's definitely better than it was a couple of years ago. Right. Right. So, yeah, I mean, he was pretty consistent with his batting average who, and, and you know, he's pretty consistent with his power, uh, you know, but like, as far as he was consistent with like, he hit, you know, like 266 batting average in the first half, 242, uh, batting average in the second half but what was good was his on on uh on base percentage was still in the 330s yeah, he even though a it, lot. What, what, what was that yeah he still walks a lot i mean he's 
Right, right. Which not a lot of us play in OBP leagues, but in an OBP leagues, he was much more valuable. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it it was definitely something to to take in. It was a long off season, and it was you know him and and Harper just going back and forth with all these different teams and all these hundreds of millions of dollars, and you know it's a lot for anybody, you know, let alone somebody who had such a good year the year before. And then it's like, well, was it a bit of, ah, I got my money. I can just, you know, do whatever now. Um, I don't think it was as much of that. Uh, I just think it was a, a whole new situation and, and, and a weight lifted, but then also added to try to, you know, have that pressure on himself to, to produce in this new arena. Um, still, still in a, a similar confines for what he was used to, you know, finishing out 2018, uh, playing against all these division people, uh, you know, opponents. But I, I think he'll, I think he'll be able to bounce back, um, and hopefully, as long as he can get the average up, then everything else is just going to fall in place with it. So, it's my thoughts on on Mister uh, Mister Machado. Um, so moving on, the, uh, next question we got here is, uh, sticking, I guess, kind of in the AL East, um, Raphael Devers. So he pretty much exploded onto the stat sheet last year. He had, you know, staggering 129 runs, 32 homers, you know, uh, eight stolen bases, which like we said, this isn't really a running position. So that was nice to see. Hit over 311 uh, average, um, had a 916 OPS. You know, this was really his first full season as well. You know, he played 156 games for the Red Sox. Um, he also led the AL in doubles uh, with 54. So, Jacob, what are you thinking about Devers this year? Are you paying up for him after seeing this full season of stats, or do you think they're? potentially a fabrication of this potential sign stealing accusations against the Red Sox. <laughs> no, I, I am actually all in on Devers. Uh, he's only 23 and he's been up with the Red Sox for three years now. So ever since he was 20 years old and he has, he has every year he has, uh, he has upped every single offensive statistic. So in his first year, he got like, 200 at bats he hit 10 homers in his second year he hit 21 homers in his third year he hit 32 homers Mm -hmm. so so i i think that sky is the limit because he's only 23 years old like i said so i think the only thing that may go down this year is his rbi total with uh mookie betts gone but i don't think that's a huge deterrent on his overall production i still think he gets 35 to 40 40 homers with over 100 rbis i think uh i think he he is well worth his adp and i would even pay up even higher if he's there in the late second round to early third i would definitely pay that price all right joe any thoughts on devers yeah i mean that uh is it devers or devers i feel like it's devers but uh, i think yeah it might be anyway know. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, coin flip. We'll figure it out later. Raphael and Boston Raphael. at yeah. third. So, yeah, I mean, he's improved, you know, <laughs> a lot every year. I, you know, I, I don't, look, it, you can't buy into 115 RBI and 129 runs every year, right? I mean, that's just, right. It's, nobody does that, right? I mean, 702 plate appearances. It's absurd. <laughs> um, yeah. <sighs> Look, it, it's it's one of those things that yeah, he's a talented player. Does he have this kind of real power? I'm not sure. Um, it's just he, he for some reason he was one of those guys that I never saw as like a big power hitter coming out of the minors. I know he had power. I didn't know he had you know 30 plus power consistently enough. Could I see his home runs dropping down to like 27? RBIs drop down to about a hundred runs dropping down to like 90. Sure. Um, I'm also not sure if he's a 300 hitter. Uh, he was 284 the first year and then 240 the second year. Yeah. You know, again, yeah, you know, you, you brought up J 
Jacob, you brought up the fact that Betts isn't there. I mean, that's that's the lineup protection that's massive. I mean, True. Betts was just a monster. You know, you, you didn't want to – now, Betts let off most of the time, so it's not really a lineup protection for him. But, like, it was one of those things where it's like you didn't – Betts got on so frequently, you didn't want to walk Devers, right? Because then that just gave bets an extra base and just loaded the bases, right, for JD Martinez True. or whoever. So, like, he saw pitches because bets was on so frequently. Um, not not to knock Devers, but I I, I think we're going to see a, a, a downgrade here for him this year. I, I, I'm not paying for last year's stats at all. And, and I think people are chasing, thinking that he's young, like you mentioned, and that he's going to get better. I don't think you're getting better than 2019. <laughs> Just be careful with that. But he's good. I'd be happy to have him on my team. But I'm not paying for last year's price. So. All right. What is next here? So another guy in the same division. Big time hype prospect. Vlad Guerrero Jr. Um, this guy was supposed to be like... The second coming of, right. you know, like, oh, my God, Mike Trout and then some, dude. He was supposed to, like, hit every other ball out of the ballpark. Um, far from it. Who came right. out and it was abysmal the first few weeks that he got called up. I mean, he looked like a prospect, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, they kept him up, and, you know, they kind of had to. The, I mean, the Blue Jays are awful, so what are they going to do, right? Um but, I mean, in 123 games, he hit 15 home runs, 69 RBI, 52 runs. I mean, a 272 average. He had some streaks where he was good, and then he had some streaks where he was really bad. I mean, he's still going pretty early in, in drafts, man. He's going uh, – I'm trying to look up at his ADP right now because I closed the wrong window when I, before right before the show. But he's going around the 59, 60 range as far as overall ADP on NFBC. You think he returns that kind of value? Like, are we going to see an uptick in production to return that kind of value? Uh, I personally do not. I I don't think so. I'm uh, I am in the same boat as you. Whereas uh, I just I don't think you know I don't think the hype came anywhere close to what he actually did. And what's crazy is that in a few of my fantasy baseball drafts last year, he wasn't even called up yet. But he was still being drafted in like the seventh and eighth round, oh, yeah. and I'm just like, "What early. are you doing drafting someone who's still in the minors?" Uh, you know, but but like you said, that's how much hype. That's how much hype this 19 year old had, uh, and it was insane. And needless to say, he didn't really live up to it. But now that he's had a year of seasoning, he, could, I. I will never say that he's going to live up to that hype this year, but he could do better. Like I can definitely see him somewhere between 22, 25 homers, maybe 90 uh, RBIs and hitting around 300 Mm -hmm. maybe. Uh, But like you said, his ADP is at 50, 57, 60 range, which is way, way too rich for me. I would rather wait until, you know, like the eighties to nineties, but he won't be there for me. So, but I'm completely fine with letting someone else take him that early. Yeah, AJ, what do you think yeah. about, about Vlad? Uh, Vlad's an interesting case. I I probably won't own him in any leagues this year as well. Uh, just I, I'm not buying into all the hype yet. And I mean, the, the the average was nice, I guess, but I mean, it was only 123 games. So yeah, if he's going to get the full season you know, and, and get up to like another 20, 25, uh, 28 games or so, uh, you know, I, I think he can hit 20 homers. Um, uh, I think he could do 80 RBIs. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I don't see it for my team. Um, you know, or any of my teams this year I, where he's getting drafted. I've got my, my settings for the ADP, you know, shifted for, uh, you know, early February to now, basically, and and he's still sitting at fifty six. So, I I'm not paying that for it right now. I'd rather I'd rather sit another, you know, round or or three and be able to get still solid production, and, and go after you know another 
set of outfielders or something beforehand that that I know is going to produce and potentially get me speed too. So I, I don't see me owning Vlad this year. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not a huge. Vlad fan and, and sorry I forgot to change the slide. I told you I was gonna mess up at some point. I'm trying to make my draft pick at the same time. This is not <laughs> I'm trying to look at things. Bad at what? bad at multitasking here apparently. So, uh, but yeah, I, I I'll talk a little more about him later. Maybe I gave a, yeah gave a little something away. So, all right, moving on. Well, now that now that you have the the slides back under control, thanks for paying attention. <laughs> um, let's talk me. about Jose Ramirez. Uh, you know, this is a guy who had two straight MVP caliber seasons in, in 17 and 18. His numbers took a major dump in the beginning of last year. He just had a horrendous first half. Of 2018, too. You know, oh, yeah, that's true. He did. Awful but at the end of 2018, finished, dude. He finished super strong in 18. Um, I want to say he finished third in MVP voting that year as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, terrible first half last year. Plus, he had a four-week stint on on the IL in late August, right in the middle of Cleveland's you know playoff hunt. Um, fractured hamate bone in his right hand. So, what are you anticipating for Ramirez in 2020, Jacob? Do you, do you think he's back to his MVP status? I th- yeah yeah I think he's much more closer to what he showed us in the second half. Uh, that is super interesting that Joe said that he started slow uh, in 2018 as well. No, no, uh, he ended he ended slow. Like he ended oh he poorly ended poorly in 2018. If you look at his splits, the end of 2018 was atrocious for him. Oh oh, oh well, yeah, then- yeah that's right. Uh, no, it makes more more sense. And then he started so- off slow, so everybody was like, oh man. Abort, abort. <laughs> People were trading for like right. for, for peanuts, man. It was funny. They were. Yeah, yeah I was going to say that, man. They were trading him for nothing, and they were spending a first-round draft pick on him. Absolutely. In the, in the, yeah, so he, like you guys said, he, he started out terrible. You know, like in over 300 at-bats, he only had seven home runs and 30 RBIs. But in the second half, he exploded for 16 home runs and 48 RBIs and just 160 at-bats. Yeah. So... The flip side, you know, he ended slow in 2018 and started slow in 2019. Perhaps, you know, since he ended strong in 2019, he can start off strong here. And uh, I do believe that he uh, he is worth uh, an early second round pick, maybe like a mid a mid second round pick, like somewhere in like you know like 16, 17, 18. Uh, I think he's worth it just because you said it, Joe, at the beginning. There's not much speed with third base, like. At, at all uh and he's he is the only one that's capable of stealing 25 to 30 bases mm-hmm. in the third base position other than a tommy edmund but tommy edmund isn't going to give you power so to get a 30 30 threat i would definitely pay up for that price i do think his batting average will be eh, it'll be like somewhere i think you'll be hoping for a batting average of around 270 um from him, but I would definitely pay that price because a 30, 30 guy is hard to find. Yeah, definitely. So like, just, just to kind of mention his 2018 second half stats. I mean, he dropped all the way to like two eighteen batting average, 10 home runs. His first Ugh. half was like epic level. Good. 29 okay. home runs, three Oh two 70 RBI. Um, he right. stole 20 bases. Now yeah. he still stole 14 in the second half. So he was still, I guess getting on base and then just running every time. So, but it was bad. Like, and I remember, and I forget which pitch it is. It's almost like pitchers figured out to throw him more. I forget if it was like the slider or something. Uh, but it was like, oh man. And then they just obviously kept doing it in the first half of 2019. And, and I, I didn't dive deeper into this, but you know, I'm not sure if he adjusted or whatnot, but it was, Definitely something interesting to to note. And when he started off slow in the beginning of 2019, I was like, oh, man, pitchers figured him out. This is done. He's no longer. I mean, because he wasn't a big prospect coming up. Uh, I still, funny story is like I picked him up. We have a, I'm in a kind of, call it a dynasty league, but it's really a a 25-man keeper league, 40-man roster league. And in 2017, when he came up, um, I snatched him up off the waiver wire. I mean, that's how 
he was unknown. Uh, nobody had him. And I, I snatched him up, won the league, and then uh, in the – what? Or no, when when did he get called up? Was it 2016? 20, I forget when it was. But 13. Was it? Oh, for no, uh, no, fourth four, wild. 14 was his first. So main. 16. So 2016 is when I picked him up, right? Like he had a good like late surge, and I picked him up. And then in the beginning of 2017, it was like, oh, he's not going to start the year or something. Like that. I forget exactly what happened, but I ended up dropping him, uh, and he was a 40th round keeper. And I'm kicking myself for it now. I'm like, oh my god! Like I just dropped like an MVP candidate. <laughs> He's got a 40th round keeper value assigned to him. So yeah, sucks. But I mean, again, he's just it. I still kind of not that I wish bad things on him like AJ does to people, but um, I don't. I still kind of hope that him. he stops producing. Like when Other he people, stopped sure. pro- when he stopped producing at the end of 2018. And then the beginning of 2018, I was like, see, there's the guy I thought I was dropping. And then he came back and was like awesome again. So I'm like, oh, damn. Okay, now I'm stupid again. Uh, So I don't know what to think about him. He's one of those guys that I think he's just awesome. And we just, you know, just need to keep going with it. But, yeah, Yeah. early early second round pick for sure. I think he's just he's one of those guys that, yeah, you're going to pay up for it because it's eventually going to come back around and. You know, like Jacob said, 30, 30 guys don't come around that often. So right. you got to buy them when you can and, and just wait on them, you know? Yeah. So uh, sticking with uh, the American League Central here, um, we're looking at Mr. Josh Donaldson. Uh, slide. Uh, he's going to start 2020 on his fourth team since opening day of 2018. Now that he's signed with the Twins, uh, he played in the ATL last year, and before that, he was with uh, a couple of different teams as well. So, I want to say Oakland and Toronto in the the same year. So, he had some some injury issues that he was dealing with in 2017 and and in 2018. Uh, you know, he only played 52 games because of injuries, but he did have an awesome campaign last year. You know, a really nice bounce back. 96 runs, 37 homers, 94 RBIs. Um, you know, do you believe that his injury history is history, and that we'll actually see the similar production from from Donaldson from 2019 and and pre 2017? Is that what you're looking at for this year, 2020, Jacob? It's tough. It's tough. Um, I commend the man for like he was labeled as, as an injury risk and he kind of bet on himself by taking that, by taking that one year deal with the Braves and just saying, you know what, I'm going to stay healthy. I'm going to earn a huge contract. So he stayed healthy. He had crazy numbers, uh, 37 homers. Uh, but, and then he got his contract, but, uh, but now that he has his contract, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit worried that he won't stay as, Ugh, I don't know um, that now that he has his contract, maybe he might be a little bit more reckless. He might, you know, he might injure himself. I'm, I am a little bit worried. I'm a little bit worried to pay that price. Uh, but if he does stay healthy, he's absolutely in line for another 35 homers, 90 RBIs. You know, his average will be around like 250. Uh, but at age 34, and he and he dealt with a lot of injuries before that. Uh, I, I don't think I'll be paying that price. I'll let someone else take him. But I know, uh, you know, I might face that person in like a head-to-head matchup, and he's going to destroy me. <laughs> but course. it's just I would much rather err on the side of caution and a healthier body if I do have that choice uh, to get someone else. But it's tantalizing since he is on the twins and he is, he is looking to be hitting cleanup for a potent lineup there. Uh, it's going to be sick. Yeah. Minnesota. Yeah. We talked about how good it was, was last was year. It got at. even better. <laughs> it's incredible. Right. Kepler um, leading off Polanco Cruz in the three hole. Usually the cleanup guy. Right. Donaldson knocking them all in. And then you got Rosario right behind Rosario. him. So, uh, it's 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 a nice lineup there. for it's, sure. It's I, I think sick. the Twins are going to be uh, 
they're gonna be a tough out this year. A <laughs> problem for they're sure. Gonna the, they're gonna be the mm-hmm. Orioles from like five years ago when pitchers just didn't want to face them and it's just they yeah. got into the playoffs because they're because of their offense and then it was like oh wait you need pitching in the in the postseason yeah. oh, never, <laughs> never mind yeah, we're our out pitching Bye, sucks, but our offense is way better <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i'm kind of with you there on that jacob like i i like donaldson but he's too much of a red flag for me there's some guys like yeah. mustakas his adp is like right behind him I'm, i'll take mustakas over donaldson any day um, yeah but- it's just he's you know he's like pretty healthy consistent batter gonna have power plays in cincy this year I'd be fine with it. So, all right. Last question we've got here is Eduardo Escobar. Um, pretty big breakout last year for the D-backs. Uh, got, you know, got a lot of playing time there. First full season there. 35 home runs up from 23 as is oh, the career high. Uh, went up to 118 RBI. Um, I mean, batting average, and it feels like the you know the, the back end stats, like the the metrics, really weren't that much better. He just was knocking him out of the park. I mean, what do we what do we feel for for him this year? Is it is it kind of the real deal? Or are we kind of going to see him regress back to his twenty eighteen numbers? I kind of see him. I mean, he he did this he. Escobar did this breakout season at age 30, which is, which is, cra- which is a crate. I don't know. It, it screams to me that this is such an outlier year where he went, yeah. where he just has never hit over 23 homers in his career. I mean, like he had just hit 23 homers and then he had 35 homers at age 30. It just, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem sustainable. I think it's a complete, I think it's a complete mirage, even though he's still capable of probably hitting where he hit, you know, in the year prior, you know, like 23 homers. I'd expect that, you know, like 23 homers, you know, like 23 to 25, maybe like 80 RBIs. But to expect a repeat from last year's gaudy numbers, I think a lot of owners will definitely be in for a letdown. I wouldn't be looking his way until like, you know, uh, I think his ADP, uh, it's currently like hovering around 120. I'm not. Let's. Yeah. His ADP's 121 right now, which I guess is fair for third baseman. If all the other power is up, like you said, Joe, like if, like it's like okay, I've waited this long on third baseman power. All of them are gone. You know what? Let's see if he can. And you know, let's see if he can repeat. If he can't, at least he'll give me 20 plus homers. Uh, but I do not believe in the power this year. Yeah, I mean, I. Yeah. I tend to agree with you, and sorry, AJ, to cut you off. The other reason why I was gonna, I wanted to say this is, it's interesting that we talked about all the guys who have hit 30 home runs last year, and I'm looking at the ADP on NFBC. He's the last one, so nobody's buying into it. Okay, <laughs> right. So, I, yeah, I mean that's that's what it is. It, it where did this come from? You're you're 30 years old, and now all of a sudden you figured out how to hit for power. Uh, no. Right. That doesn't work. <laughs> so uh, I think it was definitely a uh, a product of, of the juice balls that we've been talking about right. all, all of these preview shows, I feel like. And, you know, nobody runs anymore. So, well, if you're not going to run, then I guess we'll just pump these balls up and you can hit them out of the park and everybody can cheer <laughs> and run and spill beers or catch catch a beer and a baby with a baseball that's a foul ball and whatever. So, yeah. Um, I mean, it's. I just don't see it. I, I probably won't own Escobar this year either, just because I I don't really care for it. I mean, if he starts off hot and he's not owned for some odd reason in, in a shallower league, maybe I'll take a flyer on him for a waiver or something. But other than that, I, I just don't. I'm not. I'm not targeting this guy at all. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, so let's close out here, Jacob. We'd like to do one overvalued player and one undervalued player at the position. Uh, so give us your, your player who you think is currently being overvalued. So, so drafted higher than you would, than you would currently draft him. So the person that I think is a little bit overvalued is Matt Chapman. And I know that surprises some people, I'm sure, but I owned him last year. And even though he did help me, uh, 
he did help me win my league. There were so many games where I look up at the stats and he went over four, over four, over four. So, I mean, you're going to get a lot of over four games from him, but you're also going to get some power. Like he's definitely able to get you 30, you know, like 30 homers. Uh, And if you are in an on base percentage league, he's solid at taking walks for a guy whose batting average is, you know, like constantly in the two forties, two fifties, he, he does have plate discipline. I just, if you're trying to stay afloat in a roto league in batting average, I would be a little bit weary of Chapman. Uh, that's not to say that I wouldn't draft him if he fell to me in the, you know, in the range of ADP, like hundred to 110. But right now his ADP is around 93. And I know that's not a huge jump, but I just, I think he's being a little bit overvalued and you're looking at the homers and that's, and that's awesome. Absolutely. Uh, I just, I'm not a huge fan of the batting average there. Okay. Solid choice. Um, for me, I'm like looking, Chapman, but okay. <laughs> uh, what's that? I like oh, Chapman as, as a late power guy, but I, I hear you. The, the average That's it, cool. it, it, in there are head to head leagues where I was just like, oh my God, dude, like you're killing me. But, uh, yeah, right. it's, it's, you know, you have to have the team built. Right. Uh, True. Good enough in the average to take on somebody like him. Cause he will just murder you some weeks. True but, that. Anyway, AJ move on. <laughs> All right. Um, well, now that it's my turn to talk, uh, I I kind of wanted to go Rendon here, but I am actually dipped a little bit lower, and I'm going with Yon Mankata. So, obviously, this guy was a huge, huge prospect coming out of the Red Sox organization, and now that he's switched his color of socks, um, he had a really <laughs> nice year last year. Um, so, I, I get you know, the, the stats and, and the, the previous hype, but I mean, you're looking at an average that shot up nearly a hundred points, I mean, 80 points. And that's absurd to, to see, um, all of his other stats were pretty much in line with 2018. Um, he, he did cut down on his strikeouts. So that's part of his average jumping up. I, I feel like, but, you know, the runs were, were higher, homers higher, RBI is higher, walks were less, um, but the strikeouts were less. Uh, so the stats are there, but, you know, where, where he's going, basically the way that I have it set ADP-wise, he's sitting at uh, the 10th guy off at 65. So, you know, f- mid-fifth round, I guess, I'm... I'd rather look at, at, again, some of these other guys, like a, maybe a Donaldson or a Moustakis a few rounds later, um, or a handful of rounds later, and just get some other positions of need if if I don't take one of these first guys. Uh, yeah, fair enough. He had, a, he had a strong year. I'm not sure I'm totally buying into it, so I, I can agree with that. Mine's be a guy that, that we already talked about, and it's Vlad Guerrero Jr. I mean, his ADP is like 55 right now in NFBC. It just that's too rich for me. Like you, you, you're really buying into like the hype of his prospect status and everything else. Like you are really buying into the fact that he's gonna hit 30 home runs again, uh, or or not again, but he will get to that 30 home run mark easily. Like. I need to see it now from him at this point. He's one of those guys like I I need him I need to see it. He swung and missed way too many times for me last year. Um, he just and maybe maybe he was in his own head like he had to come. All the hype was surrounding him. Maybe he came up and was trying to press too hard and hit everything out of the park because he was doing it in the minors. It's not gonna happen, guys. Like you're gonna face Garrett Cole. Good luck. Uh, I mean, yeah, you get to face the O's a lot, so you'll you'll rip against them. But Chris Sale when he's healthy. Good luck. <laughs> Not happening. Um, so I need to see it from Vlad before I take him in the mid fifties. This is, and I'm, I've seen him go earlier. So this is just crazy to me. So. Agreed. All right. What do you have for your undervalued pick? 
So my undervalued pick was really easy for me, and that's Max Muncy. Uh, it's insane to me how his his current his current ADP is 82, and I really think it, that he belongs in the 40 range. Uh, you know, I think if you cut that in half, then you'll get what he's going to bring to the what what he's going to bring to the uh, table this year. Over the past two years, he has averaged exactly 35 homers a year, and his RBI. RBI total has spiked and this is only in 400 487 at bats because they shield him a little bit there uh in LA but he's looking at around 500 at bats again I'm sure and there is there is no denying his power he, he is going to hit you know like 35 homers again 100 RBIs is possible with Mookie Betts there and Bellinger hitting right in front of him uh so I just I see him only getting better in terms of RBIs and I think his home run potential is easily 35 and to go around the range of, you know, Jorge Soler or Tim, you know, like all these other guys who hit for power too, but he, his batting average is decent. It's like around he's averaged, uh, in in around like 250 to 260 uh but his on-base percentage is is awesome uh in 2018 his on-base percentage on-base percentage was was 391 and then in, in 2019 his on-base percentage was 374 so he knows how to get on base he knows how to hit it and i will forever draft him early just because of that mad bum go get it out of the ocean uh you know, like, I don't know if you guys remember that, but, uh, Matt bump. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. So he's a G on top of being powerful. So I'll definitely grab Max Muncy a few rounds earlier than his ADP. Yeah. I feel like that's the theme of the show. We, uh, we keep mentioning Max Muncy every, every time <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, as undervalued. <laughs> I think we did it in the, in the first base one and of course, he's got eligibility everywhere. So, and eligibility. Maybe, maybe we'll just um, yeah, make him yeah. outfield eligibility and mention him next week too. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yes. Please do. <laughs> um, I'm sure he'll earn it at some point. Right. <laughs> like, hey, Max, uh, we're gonna need you to to pick up catcher. We we really want to make you the absolute utility oh. player for all fantasy players. <laughs> Can you imagine? That'd be phenomenal. <laughs> Top ten fantasy pick for sure. I, I oh, got yeah. him on TGFBI. Rocket. I'm gonna move you everywhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So my undervalued uh, player right now is a uh, guy we maybe mentioned his name briefly earlier, and that is Mr. Miguel Sano. Um, I mean, yeah, he had uh, had some injury issues and everything uh, last year, but he still had 380 at bats and he still mashed 34 home runs, 79 RBIs, um, you know, 55 walks isn't too shabby. K's were a little high, but that's fine. No stolen bases. You're not drafting this guy for stolen bases. Uh, the average went back up, um, you know, closer to his season high of 264. I'm sorry, career high of 269 from 15. Uh, but he was at a 264 and, and 17, so I was sitting at 247, but still had a, a you know almost 600 slugging percentage. So it, it's just solid production, and, and we already talked about Minnesota when we talked about Donaldson, and that lineup is just sick this year. I mean, I, you know, again, Kepler, Polanco, Cruz, Donaldson, Rosario, you got Garver, uh, and then then you have Miguel Sano sitting at the bottom of that lineup. And, you know, the, the at-bats will suffer a little bit because of that, but he's going to gain first base eligibility too. That's right. the, the big kicker here is that he's, he's not a third baseman anymore because they have Donaldson. So you wait that out. And, uh, and if you're in one of those Yahoo leagues, that's game one, Hey, you got first base eligibility already, then you're golden. So uh, I definitely like him as a, a second uh, if not third, third baseman eligible player off off the board and throw him into your corner uh, corner infield spot or utility spot and ride the wave. I like that pick. I like that pick. 
I don't know if you guys remember in my first base article, but it's not as deep this year for no, definitely not. Uh, it's not at all first base. No, we, right. we, we mentioned that on the show. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, yeah, we couldn't make it. So we, 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 uh, yeah, that was definitely one of the things. It's just you got to get one of those top guys, man. That's why I went hard after it in TGFBI. I got Bellinger and Alonzo, and thankfully Bellinger's got outfield eligibility, so I slid him over there. But I mean, perfect. Just slide yeah, one of them in corner and field if I don't if I have to. It's gonna be awesome. So let's Perfect. do a monster. Just they just kind of fell to me. I was like, okay, thanks. Um, yeah, <laughs> exactly. No problem. <laughs> yeah. So mine undervalued is gonna be Manny Machado, and maybe this is just my uh, Orioles homer. You know, I'm a big fan of Manny, even though he's kind of a jerk sometimes on the field. Uh, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, you know, he's a little cocky. <laughs> no big deal. Um, look, I just think this guy is top notch, man. I I really think he's, he's one of the best all around players. He didn't get paid what he got paid to produce like he did last year. I mean, and, and I know that's just kind of the, the easy analysis, but I mean, yeah, there's a, the, there is a lot to his numbers to say that, you know, he really struggled last year. The left righty splits, as I mentioned, the home, uh, away splits, he, he struggled at home. I think he's going to overcome that. You know, we saw he just, when he was on last year, he clicked, man. Like June and July, he was amazing. I thought like, okay, he's back. Um, I shot him way at my in season rankings and then only to have him go, Oh no, wait, just kidding. And he sucked the rest of the year. So I, I think he'll figure it out. He's too talented. He's an elite, you know, this doesn't matter, but you know, he's an elite defensive man, so he's never coming off the field. Um and that and let's be honest, their offense is going to be better this year. I mean, they picked up FAM. Uh they picked up um uh Oakland Profar. Who I mean, yeah, say what you will about Profar. I mean, he's still an upgrade over who they're replacing him, you know. Um yeah. and, and so I think that offense is going to be better around him. Uh and, and that's that's just gonna help. I mean, I, I wish they would do. So, I wish they hadn't paid Hosmer what they did, and they could get a better first baseman. But um, you know, Hosmer, you know, he gets on base and can knock him in if he hits behind him, or vice versa. You know, whatever. So, I think I think we're gonna see a big step up for Manny this year, and he's going as like the eighth or ninth third baseman on the board. I think that's crazy. I mean, I, I I'd put him right up there with with Devers. I would drop Vlad below him. So that's those two kind of go hand in hand with my picks here. Um, I, I'd put him up there with, with the Devers pick, uh, but you don't have to. He's not going that early. You can wait another couple rounds and get him, and you're going to get an elite third baseman. Who, by the way, can run. He He's done it before. I wouldn't be surprised if he starts running again. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been it's like a like every years, other year, it feels but... like. He just decides, oh, I'm going to go steal 15. So, Yeah, yeah, I like that pick because – if you guys remember last year, he was going in the early second, sometimes in, in in the late first. I mean, you know, he has that he has that talent, like you said. He just has one off year, but he's still 27 years old. So it's not crazy to think that he returns second round value for you, and maybe even first round value. Yeah. So, I right, man, Jacob, that's all we got, man. Uh, why don't you let everybody know? where they can find you on the internet. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at ain't done yet, and done go. is spelled D-U-N-N-E. So oh. I'd love for you guys to follow me and ask me any questions. And uh, it was a pleasure being on with you guys. Yeah, happy to have you on. Um, wish it could have been the first base preview since that's the one you wrote, but uh, we'll take right. first base. You did a good job, <laughs> man. Uh, and, yeah, we'll have to do it again sometime during the season. So, Absolutely, Joe. Sounds good. All right, talk to you later. All right, man. man. Thanks for coming on. Absolutely. All right, AJ. Uh, we got anything else to add? Oh, by the way, my, my pick is in. I took Jorge Polanco as my first. Twins sh- everywhere, baby. My first shortstop. I know we were talking <laughs> twins, man. I got all excited. And just went, man, I got to get the I gotta get the, the production. But uh, it's, it's good stuff. Uh, he's my shortstop now. Might pick up another one later. I was, I was eyeing your boy Segura because I needed speed. That is he's been sp- he's been playing well in preseason so far, I, man. He's spring, looking good. Spring, spring training, uh, or whatever. Spring training. Same difference. 
No, I'm not calling you out. I'm for still. Spring training. I'm reading it. Uh, I have an article for football up, and that's why I, it's like, I, I, I wasn't calling you out for calling it spring training. I was calling you out for it's spring training. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I I get that. Just in case, because I did tell my draft room that I was potting podcasting, so I was like, guys, I'm gonna be a little late with this pick. Relax. Uh, so just in case any of them are listening, I'm not going to give away my next pick. But um, yeah, I, I got a couple guys I was eyeing up. Yuli Gurriel was there. I thought about it, but I couldn't do it. Um, it was tempting, but uh, I needed shortstop badly. And so he slid right into that role for me pretty good. So nice. we're talking in order for my, for my giraffes. We've got... Cody Bellinger, Pete Alonzo, Chris Sale, Mike Clevenger. I'm going to have a terrible pitching April. Um, Manny Machado, Max Muncy, Nick Castellanos, Mad Bum, Brad Hand, and then Jorge Polanco. So my my offense should be pretty pretty stout here. Um, yeah. I'd say one of the offenses here in my league that is uh, kind of like just your eyes like bug out when you see it here is Trout, Aaron Judge, Rizzo, Eugenio Suarez and Eddie Rosario, like, okay, <laughs> he's got he's he's like matching me with like just raw power. Uh, Suarez yeah. kind of scares me because he did have that like sh- I think it was shoulder surgery or something like over the off season, so that always scares me. But man, if he's right, man, that's that's fifty home run power right there. Uh, yeah. And then he added Straws, Morton, Carrasco, who really really frightens me, and he got the Twins closer. Um, Taylor Rogers, that's, that's a solid pick there too. So we'll see. I'm up again in six picks. So I might have to go, I don't know. I might go pitcher. I'm not sure what I'll do here. Pitcher or somebody with some speed. I keep looking at the guys with speed and it's going, eh, you don't do it for me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's tough because there really just isn't that much speed anymore. No, nah, been man, talking like, about it. And it all was, these shows. So and honestly, it was one of the things you know. It, I didn't realize it until I looked at like the numbers a little closer. Honestly, I don't know why I didn't realize that Bellinger actually ran as much as he did last year. So I had the fourth pick, right? So obviously, mm-hmm. Yelich, Trout, Acuna went not in that order, but that's those are the three that went. I was yeah. hoping somebody would be funny and take Cole, and I'd get one of those three, but it didn't happen. So I was left kind of flipping the coin between Cole who I didn't really want um, Bellinger and bets. And obviously I went Bellinger, but the reason why is because I looked at like all the projections for bets and they're looking at like 19 to 20 stolen bases. Could he go 30? Absolutely. And if he, if I knew he'd go 30, I would have taken him in a heartbeat, but you were talking like Bellinger's almost 50 home run power, right? I'm going to guess at least 40 this year. And, you know, 10 to 15 stolen bases to bets, what, 25 to 30 home run power, if that, maybe 30, probably, yeah, I think that'd be pushing it. And, like, what, 20 stolen bases? Yeah, 20, 30 is awesome. Or, yeah, 30, 20 is awesome. But I'll take close to 50 and 15 <laughs> easily, I feel like. And so... I get yeah. more RBI. Uh-huh. He scores as just many, he scores almost as many runs as as Betts will because even though Bellinger will hit behind Betts in the lineup, he's got that offense is going to be nasty too. So that's kind of why I did it. Um, it if you went Betts, I wouldn't I wouldn't blink an eye at you, man. It's just you know it is what it is. He's still going to be top notch contract year. He could you know just beast it out too. So. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. Definitely. You know, it's a thirty round draft, so there's gonna be a lot of garbage being taken here. Uh shortly we are in round ten. Rounding out to round eleven here shortly, so give you an update next week. So All right, sounds good. Well good luck with the rest of the picks. Cool. All right, man. Let's close it out. Find the music and do it. See you guys. All right. Peace. Yeah.